Hello and welcome, I'm Bert the Stormtrooper and today we're going to be taking a look at the Trendmasters Voltron, the third dimension Mighty Lion Force and I love this toy. Originally released in 1998, this gift set retailed for approximately $20 to $25 depending on where you found it. So back in uh, 1998, there was, or 97, 98, it was around that time. I remember being in Fort Bragg when uh, when this came out. There was a, a new Voltron show that was out. And this is when the CG animated shows were really starting to get popular. Things like uh, Transformers Beast Wars and Reboot. Uh, shows that were completely computer generated were becoming really, really popular. And Voltron took a crack at it, hence the name Voltron The Third Dimension, because it was a show that was completely CGI. Uh, they reintroduced the Lion Force, uh, they introduced, they reintroduced the pilots, and uh, one thing to note was that this time around, they gave all the pilots uniforms that matched the lions that they actually piloted, something that was um, different with the original show. Um, this gift set, uh, while it looks very similar to the original Matchbox or the the, uh, the old diecast uh, Voltron, it looks very similar. Uh, it's actually a very, very different set. This is going to be a completely plastic toy uh, with different features. As you can see, the set includes the five lions, the five pilots. It also includes a shield and the blazing sword. Really quick, taking a look at the box, the box that it came in, you can see it's a pretty big box uh, with a big, nice open window view. So you can see uh, it come, they come packaged uh, in lion mode, uh, at least all the uh, arm and leg bots, or lions rather, they come in lion mode. The black lion came in torso mode, which was kind of odd, but um, it's, it's funny to note that the, the product pictures on the side of the package here actually depict the original die cast figure. This is not the figure that you're getting. Uh, if you look at the back of the box, however, well, if you look at the top of the box, it's got some specs here for the lions themselves. But if you look at the back of the box, this is where you're actually going to see the figure that you're actually getting. And you can see the actual Voltron back here. You've got a short bio and you've got pictures of the lions on the bottom there. And then you've got some of the features is showing you some, not all of the features right here on the side of the box. So uh, let's get the box out of here, coming closer and take a closer look at all the lions. And coming in for a closer look, we're gonna start with the green and red lions. And these guys are pretty much gonna be near identical to each other. Uh, these guys are approximately four and a half uh, to five and a half inches in length, depending on if you go to the back of the butt here or the back of the uh, tail itself. Uh, very cool looking lions. Uh, you've got, you know, your classic, uh, right here you got your classic green with some silver detail. The legs are all painted in silver. Uh, you've got the silver collar. You've got the silver uh, mouthpiece here, yellow eyes. Uh, and you got a red tail. Now the red tail, this part was kind of weird to me. Uh, and this is like uh, the, these uh, tail link connectors are going to be red on all of the lions and uh, they're, they're a little off-putting on these guys because I'm used to the original toys having them in silver but we'll come in for a closer look on the number two red lion as well so you can get a closer look at him and you'll see that he's pretty much going to be the same these guys are nearly identical to each other with some minor mold differences the biggest being that for the most part the body on the green lion tends to be a little more roundish where red lion tends to be a little more squarish now uh a feature that i absolutely love with these guys is the guy is the fact that they bring their pilots now these pilots are going to be pretty much uh repaints of each other these guys are going to be dang near identical to each other we'll see if we can get them focused in and as you can see yeah it's it's just a very generic figure um each pilot is going to be painted in its respective lion color with some silver detail uh, on the face plate uh, the chest, the knees, and the boots. So they're pretty much all going to look the same. Now, I'm not very familiar with the show itself, but I guess they had like some uh, lion head style helmets on the show. I'm not, I'm not really sure, but that's what it looks like he's wearing there. And uh, we're bringing the red guy here, and as you can see, pretty much the same thing there. So they're going to be pretty. Oh, this guy's got like uh, silver on his uh, underpants there, where the green pilot does not but he is missing the silver on the chest. So there you go. So just minor uh, paint differences between these figures, but really they're gonna be identical and the other three pilots are gonna be the same. Now, what I really love about these guys is that you can actually sit the pilots in the lions and have them piloting them. And uh, with the red and the green lion, the way you're gonna do that is you're gonna open the cockpit right here on the top and you're gonna see there's a little peg 
right there on the seat. So you're just gonna position your figure and you're gonna peg it in so that that peg is right between the legs and that's gonna help hold the figure in place just like so. And uh, we'll leave that open for just a second while we get Red Pilot in his line. And I really love this because uh, uh, while I like the idea of what the original Panache place was trying to do with the pilots, uh, the pilots were obviously way too big for those for those lions. Where these, I feel like they're a little more, they're still a little bigger than they should be, but they're a little more in uh, scale. So they look really, really cool just sitting there in their pilots and or, or in their lions rather. And then you can just close down the cockpits and uh, there they are, they're ready to pilot their lions. And it's not a very obtrusive uh, feature. You can really barely even tell that these little cockpits are there, but it's cool that they're there. They got little windows they can see out of. You can see the little pilots in there, but when they're in lion mode and when they're in uh, arm mode, uh, they're, they're really not that noticeable. They don't stick out that much. So I think it's a really, really cool way of integrating uh that feature in there uh, these guys do have an attack you can see right here on the top they have a little yellow button and if you press on that it's gonna fire off the head of the lion respectively and uh just like just like with the original voltron these guys are just spring loaded in there and you just press on those buttons and uh, it fires off the head so that's gonna be their attack and then they've also got these wheels on the bottom so basically what you can do is uh you can give them like their uh their lion or their flying pose, like they had on the original show, kind of like that, and then you can just kind of roll them along. And they roll, as you can see, they roll fairly well. They roll pretty good. So there you go, you can do the same thing with, with the red lion. Then just kind of give him a flying pose. Stretch out his paws, and then he'll roll as well. And you can kind of just roll these guys along in the battle and then attack your row beasts. So there you go, pretty cool. And then uh, as far as articulation goes, you've got um, you got a hinge at the thighs and shoulders, and then you've also got a hinge at the elbows and knees, and you've got a hinge at the ankles. So very similar to the articulation that the original Lions had. And then of course you got the tail back here, which moves up and down for uh, combination. So speaking of combination, to get him ready for his combination, we're just gonna fold his legs up just like he did in the original show and in the original toys. So you're just gonna bring the legs up like so. Fold them up, same thing on the back here. And uh, he's ready to be combined into arm. Do the same thing with the red line. Bring up his arms, stretch out his tail, and he is ready to be combined with Voltron. So we'll set these guys aside and we'll bring in the yellow and blue lion. So taking a closer look at the yellow and blue lions, these guys, again, they're gonna be pretty much identical to each other. They got the little pilots right here. Uh, you've, we've seen the pilots, so we'll set these guys off to the back for the, for the moment. And you can see these guys are almost nearly identical to each other. At least the features are gonna be the same as well. Uh, these guys measure approximately six and a half to seven and a half inches if you go to the tail, and they're approximately three inches tall and now as far as articulation goes for these guys pretty much the same as you saw with the uh, red and green lines uh, you got a tail that can move up and down this time around but you've got your uh, hip and shoulder uh, hinge right here your knee and elbow hinge here and your ankle hinges on all four of the legs and then you got an added jaw for both the, the yellow and the blue lion so you can you can move the jaws up and down on these guys as well and then uh, the neck can move up a little bit, uh, you know, and that's gonna be for transformation later in the Voltron, but they do make for some cool poses. You know, you can actually pose like the lion's looking up or, or something like that, so pretty cool. Uh, taking a look at the detail, and you've got your classic yellow lion here, which has always been my favorite. Um, he is uh, a little basic on the detail. The, something that's missing, I think, on both of these guys is the neck detail, where the yellow lion had the red detail on the top of the neck here, and blue lion had black detail with silver trim on the top of the neck here. And uh, these guys are missing that, and I think it's sorely needed. Um, with all the other lions, I think they look fairly well, but with these two lions, that neck detail really does do a lot for them. And it's, uh, I, I kind of miss it on this. And then also with the yellow lion, for whatever reason, originally the yellow lion uh, was typically depicted with either blue or uh, like a green or teal paint on the eyes. They gave this one a gold paint, which is nice, but on the yellow lion, it just kind of gets lost. 
and at first glance you know a lot of when i first looked at it i thought maybe the eyes were unpainted and then when i looked at it closer i realized that the uh they are indeed painted it just kind of gets lost so i i really wish they would have gone with a blue or a teal on that um and then these guys do have oh well let's get the uh let's get the pilots in place i absolutely love the way the pilots go into this these are these are my favorite ones the way the pilots go in you're going to actually open up the tops of the heads just like so and then you've got your cockpits right there at the heads of the lion which are absolutely my favorite one of all the uh the lions uh pilots that came with this set this is absolutely my favorite i think this is the absolute best one i like the green and red it's okay uh, I understand why they didn't do why they didn't go with the uh, the head because the head shoots out. Uh, this is just absolutely perfect right here. I absolutely love the way that looks. And then the cockpits close back up, and the pal the pilots are in their seats and ready to pilot the yellow and blue lion. Absolutely love that. Now these guys do have an attack feature as well. As you'll see, they have uh, little wheels in the back here, and they also have a missile right here at the top. So they got a little missile launcher and a little red missile, which is already in place. So what you do is you uh, load your missile in, and it's going to click into place, and you can see it's spring-loaded. And then you just kind of let it drop in there. And we're going to take our lion, and we're going to put it in our flight position. So same, same position that it would be if it was flying. Uh, just kind of like we did with the red and the uh, green lions. And I'm going to go ahead and open the mouth on this one and these both have the same gimmick uh my blue lion doesn't work so well um i mean it does what it's supposed to do but the strength with which it does it is not that great so let's move our camera back here to try and catch this and what we're going to do is these wheels are actually pullbacks so what you're going to do is you're going to pull back on the lion until you hear it click and then you're going to let it go. The lion is going to roll forward. And at some point during its roll, the missile launcher is actually going to pop up at an angle and shoot the missile forward ahead of the lion. And uh, we'll see if we can catch it on camera with the yellow. There you go. So I don't know how well you caught. Uh, that, that was pretty fast. But as the lion was rolling, uh, this missile launcher actually just popped up like so. And it shot the missile out and forward and over the, uh, the lion. Now we'll see if we can get the blue lion to do the, th the thing with the blue lion is that it doesn't shoot that strongly and um i don't know if it's just a spring maybe it's worn out over the years or what but when it shoots the missile it just kind of hits it in the head so what i'll do is we'll go ahead and pull back on it and then i'll try and roll it here in front of the camera so you can see the missile actually pop up there you go and as you can see that kind of that kind of um, just shot off very, very weakly. Now to reset your lines, very simply, all you do is pull back on the uh, on the missile launcher here. You can see it's just kind of gravity fed and uh, place your missile back inside. You'll hear it click in place and then you can just drop it right back in there to do the same thing with yellow. And we'll get these guys ready for their combination with Voltron. And again, same thing that we've done before. Uh, we're gonna fold the tail up and we're gonna fold all of our legs up just like so we're going to close the mouth and then on this guy you know that the legs are going to point down to towards the head or forward rather towards the head and uh, we'll bring the legs up on this guy as well or on this side rather we'll close the mouth and uh oh and then on the back here you're going to reach out for this red peg and you're going to pull that out just like so and we're going to do the same thing with our blue lion and we're going to be we're almost ready for our combination with Voltron. Come on, let's get all the legs out, or fold it, rather. Close the mouth, pull out the peg, and there are our blue and yellow lions ready to combine with Voltron. So, we'll set these guys aside, and we'll get started with the black lion. So, here we have the black lion and his pilot, Keith. And I guess I haven't been mentioning the pilot's names, have I? Uh, so yeah, so there's Keith, uh, the pilot, and uh, yeah, he's going to be the, again, exact same figure that we saw in all the other pilots. Uh, very difficult to stand, so we just set him off to the side there. Uh, black Lion, I always thought the Black Lion looked more like a black bear. I don't know, maybe it's just because he's so big and round or squarish off or whatever. I don't know. To me, he always looked more like a bear than a lion, but I absolutely love the Black Lion. Black Lion and Yellow Lion is my absolute favorite. Uh, the Black Lion measures approximately six to seven inches in length, and it's about four inches tall. 
and the articulation for this guy again pretty much the same as we've seen before uh, a little little added uh, we've got hips and shoulders we've got the uh, elbows um, and uh, knees I suppose and then we've got the ankles on all four legs now we've also got the tail that moves up and down we've got a little bit of up and down in the head because of course transformation with Voltron and you can open up the mouth now unlike the original figure where the head was detached from the mouthpiece well the original figure you could open the lion's mouth and you would not see the head of Voltron not the case with this guy that head and the bottom jaw is one piece so if you open the the uh, jaw you're gonna see Voltron's face so you can open up the head a or the mouth rather a little bit just like so but if you go too far you know you're gonna want to avoid that because you'll see Voltron's mouth place there so there you go that looks all right like th right there and then of course You've also got uh, the wings that are on hinges and on rotations and then on hinges up here as well, double hinges. Uh, for those who like to open the wings on the Black Lion, I don't because in the original show he didn't. So there you go. Um, the, now to uh, get the pilot in place for the Black Lion, uh, this one was the one that I really, I, I don't know, I didn't, I found this one kind of odd. So you're going to come to the chest of the Lion or of Voltron and then you're going to take the crest right here and you're going to open this guy down just like so and you'll see three little pegs right in there and you're gonna take your pilot and just stand them straight and then you're gonna place these pegs in between his legs and in between his arms and, and that's gonna kind of peg him in place right there so he can stand in place and uh, and that's about it and I suppose that's cool for when he's in Voltron mode I suppose that's kind of cool it's, you know he's right there in the chest he's right there in the middle I guess that would be where the the heart of the operation is taking place but honestly i think it would have been better served up uh, up here on the head um it would have been nice if they found a way to put it on the head like they did with yellow and blue but understandably being how you've got the the ears and the robot head and everything up here i can see how that wouldn't happen so still cool enough and then to get him ready for his transformation into voltron we're going to fold up the tail why don't we move the camera up just a little bit we're going to extend the legs back, straight back. And now, uh, unlike the original figure, we've got these panels back here. We're gonna open up these panels right here on the thighs. And the lion legs are gonna fold up right in there and then close these panels just like so. And panel there. And then we're gonna take our, um, our shoulder panels here, our red on the top of the shoulder. We're gonna want to rotate that all the way around so that it faces the chest of the robot just like so and then we're going to take our panels right here on the top just like we did with the original and fold our lion legs right into there and uh, this one you're going to want to try and keep them as straight as possible because the legs will show into that opening right in there and get in the way of the combination so we'll bring those in there close that up oh one feature i forgot to mention wow i'd be remiss if i don't show this uh, black lion also has an attack feature you can see that there's a yellow button on the top here and there's a little missile head right there. You press on the button and Black Lion does have a missile attack feature. So pretty cool that they gave them that. So all the Lions have some kind of a launching missile or spring loaded missile attack, which is very cool. So there we go. So now we've got uh, Black Lion uh, ready to go and we'll bring in the other guys and let's get ready to form Voltron. Form feet and legs. Form, arms, and body! And I'll form the head! And here we have the Lion Force combined to form the mighty Voltron. And how spectacular is this guy? Voltron all combined stands approximately 11 inches tall. 13 and a half if you go to the top of the wings and just to give you an idea of how massive he is we'll bring in the die cast version of the uh the goal lion or the lion bot or whatever you want to call him or the matchbox Voltron or whatever this is the uh the taiwan version which is identical to the original Voltron. It's, this is the exact same one that I had as a kid. Uh, the only difference being that he doesn't have the chrome on the legs, uh, which is sorely needed. As you can see, he really does need that silver on the legs. But other than that, this is the exact same uh, die cast one that I had as a kid. He's super massive, super heavy. But as you can see, the uh, Trendmaster's Voltron stands actually just a little bit taller than the die cast one does. He's just a little bigger. So he, these guys look absolutely incredible standing side by side 
on the shelf. I absolutely love the way that these guys look. Now, uh, taking a closer look at our Trendmaster Voltron here, uh, as far as articulation goes, he's not quite as articulated as the original. Uh, much like the original, we've got no articulation at the head. We do have in and out at the shoulders due to the lion's tail, and we do have rotation at the shoulders as well, but we are sorely, sorely, sorely in need of some elbow articulation. The original one had the uh, the joints here where you can twist and bend at the elbow. That is sorely needed from this guy. Uh, that's really kind of my only gripe with this figure is that there is no elbow articulation. Um, obviously, there's going to be no articulation at the uh, at the um, at the waist, but you do have some articulation at the hip right there, and that and then you've got a little bit of what oh, oh, yellow line came off. And then we've got a little bit of uh, uh, ankle articulation here at the uh, lion um, neck, I guess you would call that. So there you go. There's a Voltron all put together. Now, as far as attacks go, he still retains his uh, launching or, um, hand or lion head attack. So you can still launch that. Um, so that's cool. Now, I fortunately, I wish and I, I, I can see why they didn't do this, but uh, it would have been cool if there was a way to take these uh, launchers here and turn them all the way up straight ahead and be able to shoot them that way. But because of the gimmick, you know, with the rolling and whatnot, I can understand why they didn't do it. They only go out about 45 degrees. Now, Voltron did include his uh, shield and his uh, blazing sword. So the way you, uh, you pop these on, and uh, just for ease of the video itself, I'm just gonna take the head off. And you can see that you've got a uh, the mouth on the green line here is kind of rounded off, as is the uh, handle of the shield. And just coming in for a closer look at the shield, you can see it's pretty cool crown, uh, chrome plastic there. And then you can just slide this guy right in there, just like so. And what I like to do is I kind of like to tilt it up a little bit so that it uh, sits at a side. And then just pop that guy right back in there, just like so. And then again with the, uh, with the red lion, I'll take this sword. Now the sword is interesting because I like the sword because it's got this shield part or you know kind of like this handguard on the outside of the sword i kind of wish that they would have done that on both sides as you can see not the case they didn't do that on both sides not only that but then you've also got like a hollow side on here so you're definitely going to want to have the hollow side uh facing in so that uh you know it looks that way that looks better than uh, that would have looked so you take that and then i'll just kind of turn his arm up a little bit and plug this guy right back in there and uh, you can, if you wish, uh, you can shoot the uh, the heads with the shield and the sword in them like that. But uh, I'm personally not going to do it. This is a very old toy. Chances are that plastic is very weak and I am not going to risk breaking my swords. So, but there you go. There is uh, Voltron, Trendmasters Voltron, uh, all combined and uh, ready to take out some row beast. So get them standing straight here for the shot. I absolutely love that. Just, I am such a huge fan of Voltron, and this thing is absolutely gorgeous. Um, like I said, I had I had the uh, the big diecast one that you saw earlier. I had him as a kid. I never had this one. This one came out when I was in the army, so obviously I wasn't buying toys back then. But uh, I, I kind of feel like I missed out. This is a very very cool set. Just the fact that it's got the little uh, the little pilots that you can integrate into each individual lion. Um, the individual attack modes. Every single lion has some sort of a spring-loaded missile attack um, form. So uh, I think the play value on that is very cool. Uh, the fact that the lions, uh, at least the arms and the legs and lions, have wheels on them so you can kind of do the simulated flying with them as well as the attacks. Uh, very, very fun uh, f uh, features a very fun version of Voltron. It does offer a lot of play value, and I am so so happy that I found this and I was able to pick it up. I found this at MegaCon, and uh, and, and I found him brand new in the box. He had never been opened. I am the first person to open this guy, so I feel very very fortunate that I found him. And uh, why don't we do this for the last shot? Why don't we just go ahead and bring in our diecast Voltron as well. We'll get these guys standing side by side for a final shot just because I think it looks awesome. <laughs> there you go. Absolutely love it. That is so cool. I, I I have been pining over this all week. I just absolutely love looking at my Voltrons side by side. And I think that about covers the Trendmasters 1998 release of Voltron, the third dimension Mighty Lion Force. What did you think of this figure or this playset? And what would you like to see me review next? Let me know by leaving me a comment, give me some thumbs up, subscribe and share with your friends if you like what you see, and I'll talk to you next time.